playing around a little bit. Not perfect, just practicing. I'll show you, I'll show you how I practice. A lot of people are curious about how maybe banjo pickers practice. Um, it's something you kind of want to do probably by yourself because there's a lot of messing up in order to get, uh, to get it right. So right now I'm using the three finger uh, picks and this is the uh, Scruggs style of playing, uh, three finger. It's five strings on here. So the new banjo I just got from Deering. I'm a Deering artist. I have been for several years and they made a special custom artisan for me. This is a very simple open back banjo. Just um, FYI, somebody might be a little curious about why it looks different. Um, there's a thing called a, a resonator. It's a, it's a backing that goes on here. And when the back is on, it, it fans out you know, around the banjo, it makes it look a little bit bigger. What happens is when you're picking, the sound waves bounce off of here, they hit the back, and then the sound travels forward. So the sound is going backwards and it deflects off of the sound board, the, the, uh, the resonator they call it, and it comes out all the holes all the way around it. It's kind of interesting how it works, but it projects and is really, really super loud <clears throat> or louder than, um, than other instruments. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, so this is an open back. So typically open backs are usually meant for, um, I don't know, you can play anything you want to on it, but primarily claw hammer style of playing, which I love and I've actually started doing that a lot lately. Practicing, gosh, about an hour a day, maybe more. Just depends on how, what mood I'm in. <clears throat> I'll show you how that goes in a few minutes, but Anyway, this is just a regular finger picking style. And it kind of goes, uh, see if you can get where you can see it. Because I hate for you, hate to do this and you not be able to actually see the finger, the finger work. I'm going to turn it at an angle here, maybe. Shoot. I don't know. I'll do it like this. It really kind of goes like this. So this is kind of the Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll from Earl Scruggs. Scruggs <laughs> wrote the song. I have the I have it uh, capoed up here to the fifth fret. The top string here is a it's a high string. I don't really tune it that high. There there are three nail spikes, like little railroad spikes. Right here, right here. You put the string underneath that railroad spike and it makes it go way higher without having to turn you know, the keys and pop the string and break it. So that provides, if a person wants to play, for example, in another, in another key, say you can't, say you're playing at a key and it's too low or too high to sing. So what you want to do is put a capo, you're just kind of putting a clamp on here to raise everything but these railroad spikes allow the fifth string to also go way up. And typically you probably would be playing higher than here, you know, but it sounds, it sounds much higher. So, um, so I'll try to show you how this goes here. Um, So anyway, when I'm practicing, um, I would try, I actually start out going slower. For example, I'll do this, I'll, I'll, um, So that's it. 
that's um, just a little bit of a routine of how I practice. I mean, it's, again, um, <laughs> when I'm playing in the living room, I have what's called a mute. And uh, I'll show you what that is. For those of you who are interested in banjo, the rest of you may not be, probably just like going, oh my gosh, it's boring me to death here. <laughs> um, there's a little device, um, and I do have it somewhere here. Yeah, hang on, I got it. Okay, this is kind of cool because this allows you, this is a, um, it's by Deering Banjos, I make them, and it's called a bridge mute. So instead of hearing the sound, hope the wind's not bothering you. Instead of it being really loud, okay, you take, take the banjo mute and you basically push this thing, you push it underneath the bridge, and what it does is it kind of keeps it from vibrating, and you have this. That cool? Makes it a lot quieter. So now when you practice, there's a train or something going by. Okay. So now when you practice, you're going to have more of this kind of sound. Let's see. So that's what that's for. That's when you don't want to disturb a bunch of people and um, cause people to social distance <laughs> away from you while you're playing. Anyway, but let's back to the loud sound again. But it's pretty cool. I had no plans of even posting this. I was just playing around. Thought, well, shoot, I'll just record it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing some a couple of the songs here in the next week or so for you maybe entertain you a little bit. So um, anyway, I will go out with uh, a little Cripple Creek. I've done this before, but you'll laugh if you like it. So it goes like this. practicing does you just you get it wrong until you get it right so anyway love you guys bye